Welcome back, NBA family. Today, Saturday, October 28th, we're officially four days into the season. We've seen players like Donovan Mitchell go off for back-to-back 40-point games. Jokic have a triple-double. Luka Doncic going off for double-doubles. We've just been seeing NBA in its prime, in its peak. And I thought to myself, we got to do a week one recap. We got to talk about how the week's been going. And when I think to myself, some of the people I love talking about basketball, there's none other than my guy, Grant. So I knew I had to bring on my guy, Grant, to talk about the league in its entirety, some of these crazy performances we've been seeing, some of these wins, some disappointing players. But I want to give the floor to my guy, Grant. Grant, how you doing? I'm doing well, John. Thank you for having me on again. It's been been a while, but I'm, I'm glad to be back and talking basketball with you again. It's great great to reconnect here, and I know we've we've kept in contact and just – talk ball all the time. So, you know, yes, it's, it's good to get on this platform and give the listeners a little, a little more content. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir. And for the, for the family out there, I got to give y'all a little bit of background. Me and Grant, we go way back. Like I'm talking way back. Like me and Grant used to be hooping together. Like we was like, damn near fifth, sixth grade. Now we talk, <laughs> now we grown man over here, man, just talking about the NBA, but we just share love and passion for basketball. So that's why I love talking to my guy, Grant, but let's go ahead and get straight into it, man. Um, for the family, I will have Grant's uh, Instagram and this his Instagram and his social media is linked under right there, his little square. So make sure you go check him out. Go show him some love. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into our first segment. And our first segment is going to be the up or down report. So that's that's pretty simple. I have uh, some some statements here and I'm going to go ahead and say it. And then you let me know if you're up on that statement, meaning yes, or if you're down on it, meaning no. And then we can go ahead and talk a little bit more on it. That's cool with you, Grant. Yeah. Ready for it. All right. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. So our first up or down statement is going to be, we all know what, what what's, what's been going on with the number one pick. We all know what's been going on over there in San Antonio. The NBA is heavily pushing Wimby, and we see his playing style is definitely great. He has a chance to be a generational talent. But what I want to know is, and here's my up or down statement is, will Wimby Nyamba win Rookie of the Year this year? I think so. Um I don't know, just just watching his first couple games and watching some of the other rookies, I think he's going to grow into his role more and more under Popovich. Uh, you know, he started slow. They weren't really running the offense through him the first game. And then, like, second half of the first game, they started giving him the ball, like, during clutch time, and he was doing pretty well. And then the second game, he kind of took that scoring up. But you can tell he, like, affects the game in so many ways defensively. He can – take the ball up and transition as a big man. Like he can make passes, dribble past someone, shoot the three. He just does so much. Like, I think it's going to be, and like, you know, just the hype around him. Like, I think it's going to be too much for that. Like any other rookie to really sneak in there. But like, if I could see someone, I'd probably say a sore Thompson, but I don't know. Not, not too sure at this time. Yeah, and no, it it definitely is going to be tough, and I feel like the 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 rookie of the year race often comes down to like who's just going to get the most opportunities, who's going to get the most shots, and I think that when we look at that entire rookie class, I think the person that we would say to get the most opportunities is Wimby. Or um, I know a lot of people been sleeping on Brandon Miller because he didn't have the greatest summer league and. Um, honestly, just hasn't even been looking that great. But if you mm-hmm. if you're talking about opportunity and who's just gonna get chances to go out there and make mistakes and play through their mistakes, I think it's got to be none other than than Wimby, of course, and then also Brandon Miller. Um, Scoot also has an uh, he has a good shot, but the only thing with Scoot is that you know Anthony Simons is there. I know Anthony Simons did just go down, but um, but yeah. So for me, it would have to come down to those three. But ultimately, I would have to be up on that statement as well because the NBA is pushing Wimby. Like I think yeah. that Wimby wants he wants to be great, and don't get me wrong, like he has the intangibles to be great. He's a good player. He you like are you talking about? He's a seven three, seven four player bringing the ball down court, shooting threes. But I also think that the NBA wants to capitalize on this and make him the face of the NBA. Um, and that's just, you know, you got to plant the seeds by ha- make sure he wins rookie of the year. Make sure he gets all stars. Make sure he gets all NBA mm-hmm. selection. So I think that he will win rookie of the year. Are you you're in agreement with me for that? Yeah, yeah, I'm up on that. I, I think he's just he's just going to get the votes no matter what. Like, I, he may not have the as good of a season as everyone's expecting, like 25, 26 points a game or something, but like – I, I think he's got it in the bag. Yeah. 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 The hype is the hype. The hype is too big to overlook. The hype is way yeah. too big, but all right. So let's go ahead and keep it pushing. Let's get to our next up or down statement. And our next up or down statement is 
we've seen the Mavs. The Mavs made some moves that that last season, bringing in Kyrie halfway throughout the season, still weren't even able to make the play uh, play play in. Well, really, because they were trying to stay getting that Wimby Wimby Yamba uh, sweepstakes. But what I want to know to you is now they have Kyrie. They really have no defense, have a struggling big man. They have Derek Lively, but he's a rookie. We don't know if he's going to get it done. But my question to you is up or down. Will the Mavs finish as a six seed or better this year? Six seed or better. The West is tough this year. I, tough. I, I, I'm scary. down on that. I'm down on that. I – I'd say obviously the Nuggets, Suns, Lakers. I think the Warriors will get over them. Uh, Clippers have a chance. Kings. The Pelicans look good. And if, if, if the Pelicans can stay healthy, they were free. They were number one seed last year when they yeah. were healthy. So like yeah. the only problem is health. So if they can stay healthy, there's no reason as to why the Pelicans wouldn't be able to have a better season than the Mavs, in my opinion. Yeah, with Zion back, and he he's just so dominant. He's gonna he's just gonna dominate that paint no matter what. So yeah, no, I I'm I'm high on the Pelicans. I I do I I'm down on that though. I I don't think they're gonna be top six. Yeah, I, I'm 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 right there with you. And, and honestly, it it's really unfortunate because I think that like w- the moves that the move that the Mavs did to bring in Kyrie, um, pretty and it's been some time now, but I'm pretty sure it was Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, and then some picks. So. They gave up Spencer Dinwiddie, who at the time was their second option. They gave up Dorian Finney-Smith, who was their best defender, like on the perimeter and the interior, literally their best overall defender for Kyrie. And I get it. Like now you have that amazing backcourt. They might have the best duo in the NBA. I say might. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But they, they, have, they have a really good duo. But like their front court is so weak. And I think that like you made this move to bring in Kyrie – and it's a splash, but it's not big enough of a splash to get you to the finals. So now you just lost all your defense, all your role players, just to be mediocre, just to be first round exit, second round exit. So yeah. with the Mavs, I'm not, I'm, I'm just not very high on it. And I ultimately fear that they might end up losing Luca. Luca is a generational talent, and and we all know that the play, the power is in the players' hands. And if Luca mm-hmm. isn't if he's constantly losing, constantly going to the second round and losing, and the Mavs aren't putting in players around him so that he can have a serious chance to win it, Luke might say, I'm out, I'm gone. I'm, I don't want to be here. Yeah. yeah, he's seeing his European brother, Jokic, just win a championship. He's like, I can't even get out of the second round. Come on now. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Yeah. And exactly. So yeah, I'm, I'm I'm right there with you. I'm also down on that. I don't think that they'll finish as a six seed or better. But let's go ahead and keep it pushing. And let's talk about Zion. We talked about Pelican. So let's talk about Zion, man. He's entering his fifth year in the NBA. And we have yet to see an NBA season from him where he plays 63 games or more. So my question to you is up or down? Will Zion finally have a season where he plays 63 games or more? I I think so. I think he's gonna they're, they're gonna have a good season. I think he he probably focused on his health the off season and just getting his body in the best shape possible because his first four years in the league has just been injury ridden year in and year out and hasn't gotten to a good amount of games to where like it's it's good for the game. I mean he's number one pick. He was like the Wembenyama back you know a couple of years ago like everyone was raving about him and we haven't really gotten to see him in full effect. And I, I, I'm really hoping he does. So I'm, I'm up on that. I think he's going to get there this year. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. I definitely uh, hope that he gets there. You know, like, I don't want to be like the glasses half empty type guy, be like, Oh, he's going to get hurt. He's going to get hurt. But I, I mean, I, you just, you just, you just have to hope to see it because like how you said, I mean, when he plays, he is a generational talent. I mean, he played, yeah. 29 games last season and was still an all-star in those in those 29 games that he played last season man at man averaged 26 points on uh seven seven rebounds four assists like and he's just he's a problem like he's a menace out there like if you if you try to put a big on him he's just way too fast if you try to put Mm -hmm. somebody that's quick enough to keep up with him he's just way too strong so like he's like that perfect in between and if he's healthy i mean you 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 have to give him his respects, and you also have to give respect of uh, to the Pelicans. Yeah, and am I mistaken, or is it a contract year for him? 
It is contract year for him, yeah. Yeah, so, like, I feel like, you know, he's going to try and stay on that court as much as possible, be balling. I could see him scoring 28 points a game this year and just absolutely dominating. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. We 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 will see with Zion. It, it, it's tough. It's always tough for like when big dudes like Zion. I mean, really any anybody in the NBA is big, but like especially when you're that big as big as like as big as Zion, when they have foot problems, it makes it so hard because it's like, bro, you need your feet to get in shape, right? So like I remember when people were like killing Zion for being out of shape, but he had surgery on his foot. It's like, well, what do you want? How how is he supposed to get in shape if he can't even run right now? You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. that. That's why it's always tough whenever like big dudes like that have any foot problems or knee issues. Um, mm-hmm. So definitely uh, be praying for Zion, hoping that he has a healthy season this season. Yeah, yeah, All absolutely. Right. All right, bet, bet, bet. Let's keep it pushing, in, my boy. Let's talk about the Sixers. So last three years, the Sixers have been able to finish as a top four seed in the East and and be able to secure that home court advantage. But this year. Things are looking a little different because maybe James Harden might not play at all. So what I want to ask you is up or down, will the 76ers be able to, again, finish as a fourth seed or higher? Hmm. You know, I don't, I don't think the East is very strong this year, honestly. Like, I think it's very top heavy. I Obviously, the Celtics and the Bucks they're probably, in my mind right now, like two contenders, two favorites in the NBA right now with the Nuggets. Um, but honestly, I, 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 I could see him getting that four seed, um, but teetering the line, I don't think they're really, I don't know, depending on the James Harden situation, because I don't really know how it's going to play out if he's going to come back or if he is going to get traded. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I got him on my fantasy team, so I'm hoping one of the two happens <laughs> Damn, enough, you, you know? took him on your fantasy team, Grant? No, dude, I, I missed the first five picks. I thought it was at 1145, but it was at 1045. Oh. And I missed the first five picks, and then that it was like crazy. four out of my first five picks were guards too. So I was like, okay. but I ain't gonna lie. Even though you missed your first five picks, you still got a squad though. I I, I, oh, I seen yeah. that squad you sent me. You, yeah, you still got a squad. Yeah, it's a nice one. It's a nice one. <laughs> Man, okay. So 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 then so you're gonna you're gonna go ahead and go with up. And you think that they will finish as that fourth seed? Yeah, just barely up. I think it'll be like Celtics, Bucks, and I don't know, maybe. Maybe the net or not the Knicks. I meant the Cavs. The Cavs. Okay, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Okay, so so I I mean I mean t- t- teetering the line of fourth seed. Like I, I I could definitely get with that. But me, I'm more on the side of I think that there'll be more of the fifth or even the sixth seed um, potentially. And again, like this is two different conversations with and without James Harden. Without James Harden, as much as I think Tyrese Maxey is that guy, as much as Joel Embiid just got an MVP, I don't even think that they're they they finish the top six seed without James Harden. If James Harden plays and James Harden plays to his potential and doesn't lally guy, like get, gives it his all. I think that they can probably finish as, as the fourth, as the fifth, as the fifth seed or the sixth seed. But um, as of today, as of right now, James Harden's not playing. So we have to go off that. And I just don't think that we know that they're not going to beat the, they're going to be better than the Celtics. We know they're not going to be better than the Bucks. I don't have them being better than the Cavs. I also don't have them being better than the Knicks. So that's that's four seeds right that, that's four seed right there. You never know how Miami can play out. Yeah, I know the Heat never really take regular season that serious, but you never know how they could play out. Uh, the Raptors also another team don't don't really know how how, how they could play out. And I mean. Usually, I would feel so much so comfortable taking the 76ers over the Raptors, over the over the Heat, and over all these other teams. But with all this drama that they got going on, like I, I don't even know what's going to come next from over there. Like really? it's, that organization is a mess right now. Yeah, that that is true. I I, I think also another point like that you kind of made me think about during that was like, yeah, without James Harden and having Tyrese Maxey basically step into that, you know, that second. Uh, star role, like, or trying to be that second star yeah. role. Um, I just, yeah, they just won't be as good of a regular season team. Like, yeah. And I mean, I can't say they would be a better playoff team either. So, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I kind of, you, you kind of convinced me. I'm down on it now. I'm down on it now. I think, I think the Knicks will be better too. Yeah, I, 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 no, and don't get me wrong. Like, I really like Tyrese Maxey, and, and I, I probably will catch some hate in the comment section, or somebody be like, "What? Like, you don't believe in Tyrese Maxey?" And I do, I really, really do. But the kid is twenty three years old. He's, I think, he actually just turned twenty three. So the kid is twenty three years old. He's not ready for second option 
on a team trying to contend. Like he's just not ready. He's got great potential. I think he has potential and he can get there. But like as of right now, we there's no way we can ask Tyrese Maxey to be the second option on a team trying to contend, trying to win a championship. Because if you have Joel Embiid, you better be trying to win a championship. Like you better not be like trusting the process at this point. With the way Joel Embiid is, you need to try to take advantage of that window. But again, like I just don't think Tyrese Maxey is, is good enough to be a one um, A 1A or a two two A type player. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I don't. I don't think it'll be. Unless James Harden comes back, yeah. I, I don't think there's a they're, they're going to get the four seed actually. But you know, Man. we can see t- if Tyrese Maxey takes that big jump. You know, like, yeah, I, I could be. Yeah, I, year, so. exactly. I could be. Yeah, I could be totally wrong. Tyrese Maxey could take an absolutely huge jump, but just from what I seen last year, I don't know if he's ready. But before yeah. we get off the Sixers, I gotta I gotta get your 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 thoughts on Harden because I mean we you're in you're in the NBA media, you're in the NBA world. Like, just spill off to me about that. Like, how you feel about that situation? Dude, I don't even know. I, I've kind of stayed away from it a little bit. I'm just like, you know what, deal with your drama and we'll see how it plays out. Like there's just there's just too much going on and he's I don't know, it's just a little petty from both sides, you know, like it's just they need to figure it out. Like I, I think they should just figure out a trade and just move on from the situation and try and move forward and hopefully get a player that they can at least like plug into a, the lineup, but I don't know. It's it's gonna be tough to get too much for James Harden now, too. Yeah, honestly, I'll be real, bro. It's it, it's it's a real messy situation, and, and and I feel bad for the 76ers because if you look at it, like this is exactly what happened to them last year too. Like Ben Simmons held out and refused to play uh, over, over two different reasons, but nonetheless, still held out and still refused to play, and then that they that that drastically affected the team. Like Ben Simmons before leaving was like a huge part of the team, so taking him out drastically changes everything you're trying to do as a team and then they have to deal with that and then all right cool we we get done with this ben simmons saga and this whole ben simmons you know shadow and cloud that was over the team i know that definitely affected joel Embiid, whether he talks about it or not that had had to affect him so you deal with that all right cool we bring in james harden Joel Embiid's probably feeling good. He's like, cool. Like, this is probably the best pick and roll partner uh, I've ever had in my career. He can mm-hmm. score. He could d- dish it to me. This is probably the most complete player he's ever played with. And then, boom, James Harden wails out in the playoffs and then asks for this max extension, which he just doesn't deserve after his performance in the playoffs. And then, now the 76ers are literally right back in the same spot that they were last season with a player that is asking for something that he just simply doesn't deserve and is refusing to play because he isn't getting his way. Like, I just feel bad for the organization at this point. Like, I, mm-hmm. I just – I and, and the crazy thing is, too, is I also low-key feel bad for James Harden because, like, what team is he going to go to? Like, I, I, I was talking – I was having this conversation with a friend of mine the other day and I was like, look around the NBA. Like, what team will legitimately take James Harden, like, give away someone of value, give away something of value, whether it be picks or players, take in James Harden and say, and legitimately say to yourself, wow, I now have gotten better. Because the Clippers, I don't think so. There's only one ball, and those, there's only one ball, and those are all ball dominant players. I don't see that working. At all. They love Russ too. They love and they, Russ. They love Russ. The, if you want to talk about a young team, like you know, let's say the Rockets or some of these young teams, why in the world, as a coach or as an owner, would you bring James Harden around your young players? Like you don't want him yeah. giving the, those young players that kind of toxic ego or showing them that's how players are on the NBA are. So you, I genuinely look around the league and I say, hmm, is James Harden going to be out of the league? Like he really might be out of the league. I'm not playing. Like what team is going to take him? And what and when what team will give up some of the value from? If you can tell me, yeah. tell me, because I don't think that there's one. I yeah, I don't know. I was just looking through the teams, and I'm like, no, 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 no. At the like one of the only ones that like maybe I could see him just like you know like a little trying to boost his value up for some trade or something is like the Jazz. He goes there for a year or half a year and just like boosts his trade value. But I don't know. They don't really have much trade pieces outside of picks, you know. Man, and, and and you like and for him to go there, like he would have to have the biggest attitude change. Like oh, we yeah. realize that he has cried his way out of three teams, like three different teams that he has cried his way out of. Like uh, actually, I'll say two. I'll give I'll, I'll give him 
uh, like uh, the I'll give him the benefit of the doubt on Brooklyn because you know it wasn't really the situation maybe he wanted it as Kyrie and KD. So I'll give him the pass on that. But bro, crying his way out of Houston by getting fat now, crying his way out of 76ers, like bro. I me personally, like, and I, I'm a regular everyday working citizen. Like I work freaking Monday through Friday, like yeah. bro. You can't just not show up to work. Like, yeah, what are you, you doing? Just, nobody does that, bro. Like, nobody gets paid the money you get paid. And now you want to do things that regular people can't even do. We don't even get paid the money you get paid. Like, I that know. to me is crazy. Like, bro plays basketball for a living and is complaining. And they know, just, man. like, crazy amounts of money with his max contracts over the years. Like. Come on, man. There's no way he's like, oh, I need it. I need to feed my family. Like, James, yeah. you are just being stingy, he's right man. He's the grind. Like, don't you want to go win a championship or at least contend? Like, People run, man. That, see, that's crazy. And, and, and what's crazy to me, Grant, is the fact that, like, we're sitting here, and this is so clear to us, so clear to us. Like, But to these players, it's like it's just not so clear to them. So it makes me think, like, it, where's the disconnect? Like, do I love basketball more than you? Like, I know you're a better basketball player than me, but like, do you not love this sport? Like, are you just just doing this because you're good at it? And <laughs> like, you know, yeah. that's what it comes down to, that's man. Crazy. That's, that's crazy. But all right, let's get to our last up or down statement here, and that's about the Oklahoma City Thunder. Last year they made the play in, and now this year they really feel like they're ready to take that next jump, and I feel like they're ready to be able to be better than the plan. So that means finishing as a six seed or higher. So are you up or are you down on the Oklahoma City Thunder finishing as a top six seed? Uh I'm down. I don't I don't think it's time just yet. Um unless like they piece some of their pieces together before the trade deadline and like send them out like they got you know insane amount of picks like 26 first round picks or whatever over the next eight years or whatever it is. It's just insane. So I, I think like one of these years, you know, Shea is getting up. Like I, I have him as one of the, my dark horse MVPs this year. Like I, I just think he needs a, someone a little bit better along his side, you know, and to make that jump. Um, and like it, I don't know if Chet will help with that as much this year. I think it's going to, you know, take a little bit to get his feet under him in the NBA. It's tough. It's physical. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be difficult for him, but like, I think if they, you know, they piece a couple of their players together, a couple of their picks, they can go out and get a star player. But, you know, it's it's tough. There's not really star players available looking to go out other than really, obviously, James Harden. But <laughs> that doesn't, you don't want that. You definitely don't want that. <laughs> no, you don't want that there. <laughs> but Bring man, OK, I like that. I, I mean, I, I'm 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 definitely. I'm definitely with that. Like, I, I, I really like uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, and I really like your pick about that that being the dark horse for MVP. Um, but, but like how you said, just like, man, they're in the West. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, dog. Like, you're, you're not going to be better than the Nuggets, not going to be better than, than the Lakers, not going to be better than the Suns, not going to be better than the Warriors, not going to be better than the Kings, not going to be better than the Clippers. Like, Shoot, bro. Even even Minnesota by ca- my cats. A lot of teams so slipping this year because like yeah. that, they didn't. They they lost Cat last year, and then when they Cat came back, they lost Rudy. And then when but when they when they all came back, and then that's around the time they were going to play the Lakers in the play in. They lost uh, uh, Nas Reed. They lost um, so many so many important key key pieces. Um, so that's why like as as great as I think OKC is, as much as I love Shay. Like as a matter of fact, I was watching. Um, Oklahoma City Thunder and Cavs yesterday. I was mm-hmm. I chose to watch that over the Celtics, um, the, the the Celtics and Heat primetime ESPN game because oh, I, I, the way. <laughs> I, I freaking love SGA, dog. Like oh, as a so Hooper, cool. I love watching SGA. And then Donovan Mitchell, like that that matchup, they went at it. SGA had I think he had thirty four points, eleven rebounds, and Donovan Mitchell had forty points and like eight assists. So, bro, they were just going at Amazing. it. So, and yeah. yeah, SGA is he's a freaking bucket. But I think you. You said it best, brother. Like, it, uh, as good as as great as Josh Giddy is, like, I just don't think Josh Giddy is, is enough for him right now. Yeah. Let's see. I think let's he see can get Chet, there. He can get there. Yes. Yeah. But how long is that going to take? Exactly. How long? Uh, how long is that going to take? Chet, I bro, I freaking like Chet a lot. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Um, he just reminds me not 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 reminds me because I don't think we've seen players like this, but he just shows me where the NBA is going. Like. 
wow mm-hmm. like chet and wimby just make me feel like yeah. yo like these players are like monsters at this point this is crazy but yeah no i, I, I like chet a lot but unfortunately i don't, I don't yeah. think that okc can make that jump and finish the top six seed yeah. um but all right brother um do you have anything to add for the up or down segment or you want to move on to the next segment here um i was just gonna say uh we didn't mention him for for the rookie of the year but do you have chet contending for that at all with his second Man. year rookie of the year thing personally you about that situation too do you think that should go away and it just be strictly rookies I think I think it's be strictly rookies, and I I feel this from when number one Ben Simmons and Donovan Mitchell were going at it with like with the whole like rookie of the year thing. I yeah. never thought Ben Simmons should have had it because like if you were if you were in the NBA for one year, like even if even if you didn't play, even if you were riding the bench the entire year and did not see the court for one second. You still exactly, bro. You like you still were there, bro. Like you still were you were still hopping on these these planes at two o'clock in the morning and arriving in at cities at four o'clock in the morning. You were still like accustomed to the NBA speed. Like you weren't in a totally new city. You weren't in a totally sometimes in a totally new state. Like and yeah. if you went to, and if you went to play for the Raptors in a totally new country, like you know what I'm saying? So like Bro, you had an entire year. Even if you weren't playing, you were at the practices. You were meeting people. Like, this wasn't your first time walking into the facility. Versus for a rookie, like, think about this. Like, you're either moving to a new country. Like I said, if you're playing for the Raptors, a new a freaking a whole new country. If you're moving to – if you're going to another, like, state, like, you're going to another state, another city, you don't know nobody, you are, like, you're the new guy in town. You've literally never walked in that facility. You don't know the training staff, like – you're not comfortable with them. So to me personally, like that right there will make the world of a difference between you playing well and you not playing well. That's just being mm-hmm. comfortable and being like mentally in a good place, you know? So I think that like yeah. check getting and getting brick of the year would be like weak to me the same way Ben Simmons got it. How you yeah, feel? No. I, I, I'm, I'm on the same wavelength. I think I honestly think they should take it away eventually, yeah. but um, yeah, I just, you, you, you're sitting on the bench, you're riding with the team, talking to, I don't know. I mean, there's not not many vets on that that OKC squad, but <laughs> still, you're still you're still talking to players. You're still talking to coaches. Like the coach oh, yeah. gets to know you. You know what I'm saying? Like the coach yeah. gets to know you. Like, bro, you have a whole year of that versus mm-hmm. not. Like, I think it's like clear the advantage that the guy that has spent a year in the NBA not playing. It's clear the advantage that he has over a rookie that just came out from college playing like 30 games a year. Now you're supposed to play 82 games a year, stay along with this schedule. Like even, even as, even as far as jet lag, bro, like you could fit, you could figure out your jet lag that first year by not playing, you know what I'm saying? And then versus yeah. someone that's that coming in now they're playing first year. You got to figure out your jet lag, figure out your life and you're hooping. Come on. Man. Yeah. Yeah. And like that first year, like last year for Chet, he's sitting on the bench watching 82 games of every player in the league. He gets to study their tendencies, study how he can attack them. Like there's so much more like Wemby was too busy playing overseas and whatnot. (laughs) And like, you know, it's, it's, it's way different. Yeah. So I I, I like that. I that. I like that we're in agreement with that because I've 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 had a, I've had a talks with a couple of homies and they're like nah like you should get it I'm like man that's weak <laughs> but, but all right all right brother so let, let's go ahead and move on to our next segment of the show here and that is the who is segment I have some statements here and um I will like I'll say the statement and I'll say who is and then boom the statement and you give me who that is uh, for you and then we can jump into it a little further if you want or just keep it pushing that's cool with you yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. And our first who is statement is, who is the best duo in the league now? That's a tough one. That's a tough one because um, now we just seen Dame go to the freaking Bucks. I know. I, know. I, I think it's between two for me. It's 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 either the Suns, Book, and KD or Dame and Giannis. And seeing Dame and Giannis in that first game, Dame putting up 39 in that first game and just – hitting stuff, driving by people, making impossible layups, going to the foul line. And Giannis is just – literally, he didn't have to do much really like that yeah. game. He's like, all right, Dame, you take you take over this game. I'll, I'll get another game, you know. <laughs> and I, I got Giannis and Dame as that, yeah. Yeah, Giannis and Dame. Okay, okay. And and you would have Book and KD over uh, Tatum and, and Brown? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, okay. I think Book is, Book is so good. Book is and, special. Know, Book is special. That's why – 
you're making me rethinking. I ain't gonna lie because so so I definitely have Damon Giannis as the best deal in the league. I think that that's just it's just unfair. Like man, can like I'm honestly imagining a high pick and roll with Damon Giannis, and then now you got Dame coming down court with the ability to either get to the hoop and just be Dame, pass it out to Chris Middleton or all the shooters around him in the corner. Lopez, Bobby Portis. <laughs> or hit Giannis that's rolling. You can either hit Giannis on the on the on the lob or you can even just throw him with a little a little uh, roll on the bounce pass. Yeah. Bro, like these are these are literally like endless scoring options. So, yeah, I definitely have Damon Giannis as number one duo in the league. And I do I really do want to go booking KD, but I feel like it kind of be disrespectful to Brown and Tatum, though. Like, man, yeah. like these past couple of years, they've been every year making deep finals runs. Every year making deep finals runs. So, I feel like it'd be kind of a little disrespectful. But that's why yeah. that, that's why I wanted to see what you, what you got. Yeah, that that's fair. I I mean, they've been they've been so good in the playoffs for so long. But like, I think you know they they got a better team around them than the Suns do. And that's um, true. And. I don't know, maybe maybe a better coach at this point, but Vogel's <laughs> yeah. pretty nice. Vogel's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then um and then uh, but then yeah, when I talk about that with the Suns, it's just tough because like Kevin Durant is like the great like n- n- I wouldn't say he's the greatest. I mean, he's the greatest scorer of all time. Like, just go get a bucket, but he's not like the, of course the number. He's. I honestly, to be real with you, I think I'd probably put him as the greatest scorer of all time, like in my opinion. Like I'm not talking about like yeah. all time, like all time that that's LeBron, but I'm saying like go get a bucket. I'd yeah. probably if you ask me to pick one player in the NBA history or an NBA all time, go get a bucket. I'd probably pick Kevin Durant. I'm not gonna lie. Would you or would you go with? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, I you know you can go through a couple other players, but yeah, I think he just gets to his spot. He can pull up from anywhere. He's you know, six, nine to seven foot, whatever. Yeah. It's all rumors, but he, he's he's too good. Yeah, I think he's he is the best scorer, if not second, definitely. Yeah, so 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 me, yeah, me personally, I'd I'd be I'd definitely have him as the best scorer of all time. So it's tough to because Book's also a fucking great scorer. Like Book just knows how to just get go get a bucket. But oh, yeah. so so it, it's tough to have him over Tatum and Brown. I mean, so yeah, it's tough to have Brown and Tatum over them, but ultimately, I, I ain't gonna lie. I think I'm, gonna, I think I'm gonna have to sway with uh, Brown and Tatum just because, yeah. just because their respect and, and and you know how far they they've been getting, um, yeah, playing playing fair. together as a duo. Completely fair. They also, you know, uh, Book and KD. They also got Beal this year, so it's it's gonna bring them down yeah. a little bit, I'd imagine. So. Yeah, man, man, let's see, let's see. But all right, so let's get to our next who is statement. And our next who is statement is who is most likely to have a breakout season this season? Breakout year. You know, I I want to use my bias and go go with one of my Warriors guys, but I don't know. It's there's there's so you many can. good players in this year. I, I do think Kaminga will be up there. You know, I think he's gonna take a pretty good leap. Like he's He's a little out of control. I think he's going to be our new Jordan Poole. He's just running into players, going a little too fast for for his body and what he can do. But I think I think he's going to be pretty solid off the bench, especially with CP dropping him the ball. And one thing I was looking forward to and I was really hoping to see, but I don't know if I saw it once in the first two games, was I wanted to see uh, CP and uh, Kaminga run a pick and roll when their minutes overlap, and I was just – I don't think I saw that because I just think that would be perfect. You got the lob, dump off, and Kaminga's getting better at playmaking and seeing that second pass so you can dish it off to a shooter outside because we got plenty of those. But all it was was really CP and Saric. So I don't know. But, yeah, I think Kaminga could be up there. But who, who are you? who you got? I like that. I, d- I definitely like that Kaminga pick because I'm, I'm, I've am I'm been a big believer that, like, yeah, Chris Paul is going to – unlocks Kaminga to a freaking a whole nother level. I mean, I, I he already has like he already has just unlocked that team. Like me personally, yeah. like I, I know you're a Warriors fan, but like me personally, like I was so down on that CB3 move. Like I was like, yo, this is so dumb. Like this is not gonna work. Like CB3, he's not gonna want to come off the bench. His ego's not gonna take it. And then and then he's gonna start tripping on the team. 
Um, he's not going to understand and come off the bench for the first time in his career. And and then if he does, and then, and then if he does start, like what about the Curry playing off ball? Now you're putting Curry off ball, the defensive problems. Like I was just running through just issues and issues and issues and issues. Yeah. issues. Bro, I've been, I've been. Besides the defense, defense, I still, I still have some some concerns about that. Oh, so, yeah. no what, yeah. Yeah. But every every other issue I've had, CP3 has been like, "Yo, John, shut up and take this." Like, pause. Like, that sounded crazy, but like he was like, he was like, <laughs> he was just like, "Bro, John, shut up." Like, I don't want to hear it. Like, it CP3 had, he, yes, he started in these two games he's played, but like, bro. Even in the game, even if he hasn't been playing starting minutes, like he's been been able to play with some of the like the six man, seventh man, eight man of the game of, of the Warriors team, and he's helping them excel. Bro, Curry just went off for forty one points last night. CP three, I think, had like twelve assists of those of the yeah. like one, and he's just straight setting Curry up. Like we knew Curry was great off ball, but I don't know. I don't know why my mind thought that like I guess Curry. Why would Curry not be even better? Off ball with the greatest, like on, one of the greatest on ball point guards to set him up. I yeah. I don't know. Again, the defense I still do have concern on, and I still especially want to see how that's going to play out come playoffs. But dog, like so far, CB three has been playing so well for the Warriors, has unlocked that team, and that's why I like your answer for the for the whole Kaminga thing as well too. Yeah, yeah, and I I mean like Steph, I in my opinion, he's the best off ball player of all time. Like. He runs consistently. I think he's like year in and year out. He's running the most because Miles. he's just yeah. currently running around screens and faking this way, running all the way back to the other side. And like, you know, you got Looney, Draymond, Wiggins, all of them are setting screens for him. Even Clay, they'll set screens for each other. And he's just, yeah, he's so good. And what I've seen so far, Chris is just putting it, Chris Paul is just putting it right in their pockets, right where they right want there. it. And especially for Clay, like, that's perfect because he got that shot where he just gets it and he's just straight up. There's no yep. dip at all. It's just straight up, you know, like, and it's, it's, it's going to be nice. And I, I think with how they're playing in the first two games, they got Chris Paul starting, you know, Draymond's been out, um, but you know, we'll see, maybe Looney goes to the bench and they keep starting Chris Paul, but like with what they're doing, staggering the minutes of Chris Paul with the bench, I think they're going to ultimately move Chris to the bench and, it's been, I mean, I think his minutes with the bench have been real good. I think without him on the bench or at least staggering yeah. those minutes, like our bench was horrible last year. So bad. And we lost pool. So mm. without Absolutely. CP, you know, it's going to get worse. It, so I think, I think he should go into that bench role, me personally, but yeah, we shall and see. I think it's a good fit for the Warriors though. And in that, um, in uh, in Gilbert Arenas uh, podcast, uh, Andre Andre Godala was on there talking, and he was just basically kind of talking about the team last year, and he was just saying like when the starters would come off, like that, like we, the, it would be such a huge dip off, like the team would be drastically so bad, like, we didn't have no bench, so that's why like he was talking about like why CP3 is gonna be such a great fit because he's gonna allow us for there not to be that big of a drop off, so yeah. Right there with you, but for my breakout player of the season, uh, I actually have o- Obi Toppin. I have Obi Toppin. Um, when I went to Obi Toppin because I mean, le- his last three seasons that he was in New York, I just think that he was getting misused. I don't think Tom Thibodeau was using him in the right way. They were just kind of they, they kind of were asking him to be a shooter when he's not really like a shooter. Mm-hmm. He's more he's more of a pick and roll lob threat type guy, uh, high flyer, running, uh, you know, run run just run you know running and gunning. That's why I think that you take him out of New York, take him out of that situation where he wasn't flourishing and put him in Indiana, where literally all they do is run and gun. Ty, uh, uh, Tyrese Maxey, just I'm t- not Ty- Tyrese Halliburton just wants to run that. He, as soon as the ball gets inbounded, he's just trying to run looking for lobs like la- last season. I believe it was like the number was like 37 percent or like 40 percent of Obi Toppin's buckets came in transition like the man just was not good in the half court set. So putting him here on this on this um, Pacer squad, that's just gonna fly with him. I think he's gonna be great, and his numbers are just gonna skyrocket this year. Yeah, they're just they're just such a free flowing offense, and like even even when they can't do the transition, they're just you know they're they're they got so many options, and they're all most of them are young outside of like you know Miles Turner and a couple others, but um, he's not he's not old at all yeah. uh, but they're just they're just so free-flowing you know they set screens they got so many shooters they they just and what obviously in transition that's when they're at their best they just 
they just run and they got options for the lob. Tyrese is just running that so well with passes. He can he can throw it anywhere or just score when he wants. Like, yeah, yeah. I think I think that's a good shout. I think Obi Obi is definitely gonna take a pretty big leap this year with the Pacers. Yeah, man. Shout out Obi. Um, but all right, let me let me get to these last two. Who is uh and this one is gonna this is this is an interesting one, especially because first week of the NBA, you know, I wanna get your prediction early, but who is your MVP this year? You know, I actually haven't thought about this too much yet. Um, but I honestly, it's it's got to be Jokic. I, I think he's going to get that back again. He's too I mean, good, I, I, man. He's too good. He's too good. He is too good. I mean, I I, I say again, but I MB guy last year. But I, I yeah. like, bro, like, shit. I, I mean, I, 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 it's hard to argue against that. I'll be honest. Like, I'm trying to come up with an argument against that. But, like, I don't know, bro. I think it might, like, voter fatigue might start coming around or some shit, bro. Because, like, yeah. I just think, like, Okay, so my original pick, like last year, when I was like, "Who's gonna be MVP for this year?" was Luca. I thought Luca was gonna be MVP because, shoot, I mean, uh, we know what Luca does. The man just almost put up a fifty-point triple double last night, um, and then first game put up a double double. But mm, after watching the Celtics' first two games, it's looking like Jason Tatum is here to claim it this year. He's looking like yeah. he's gotten so much better this off season, but um. But I don't. I don't know. It, it, it's it's so early. But I definitely don't have Jokic though, only because I damn near voted for him. That's for me. Yeah. No. That that that's fair. I think I think you know it's voter fatigue is definitely going to set in soon enough. But like, I just I don't know. I think he's so dominant. But yeah, I like yeah. that Tatum shot a lot. I think he's going to be really really good this year. He's just gotten better and better every year, and he's so well rounded. He guards like you know the best forwards on every team, whether it's like LeBron or I don't know, you just go down the list of the best forwards and he's just guarding them night in and night out, but also putting 30 up like, and he's got good playmaking. It's, he, and he's, he's light skinned. <laughs> <laughs> and he's light skinned too. So man, like the man's just yeah, winning all around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like that shot a lot though. I like that shot a lot. I think, yeah, yeah I mean, it, we'll, we'll see how the voters play out and how the season plays out. I mean, also just, you know, obviously hoping for the best health in the league. I, I hate those years where just players are just dropping like flies and going out. I just, I just want it to be a competitive, healthy year right now. You know, obviously there's going to be injuries, but, um, you know, yeah. if we can have a mo- majority of the stars playing and playing at their top, like I think it's going to be a really, really good year this year. Facts, facts. I'm right there with you, brother. And then last, who is question is, I know this is very early, but who is your championship favorites? All right, so it's between the Bucks and the Celtics for me right now. I I think they're I think I mean a third team in there is the Nuggets. They're just so good, and you know I think Mike Malone's a great coach, and they got a couple youngsters coming up, Christian Braun, Peyton Watson, that are pretty good. A lot of people are high on Julian Strother who they just drafted out of Gonzaga. And I think, I think they'll be real good again, obviously. Um, but I, I honestly, I got to go with the Celtics this year. I think, I think they're so well-rounded with Chris Stapps there. He's been playing so well. He's so versatile. He's, he's like perfect for that system and in their team. And he just, he just does so much for them. Like he, He'll get the blocks. He'll give some interior presence. Not the best, obviously, but he'll give some of that to replace, you know, Rob Williams going to Portland. But um, I just think they're they're so good. Obviously, they're lost Marcus Smart, but um, you know, replacing with Drew, that's not bad. You I, know? <laughs> me, bro, me personally, I think that you're getting better. Like, I you, know, yeah, you, yeah, I was just about to say that. Like, Drew's the best perimeter defender yeah. in the league, and I've I've heard people say like. It may not look like it, but like I've heard many NBA players, especially like guards who go up against him, like say Drew is like stronger than Marcus Smart and he's like just hella strong. So like yeah, I don't know. No. He's, he's just so good. Like yeah, I, I think that's an upgrade. And then obviously offensively, Drew I think Drew is better than Marcus Smart. So yeah. it's just it's so good. They just obviously got better. And I yeah, I got the Celtics as my uh, favorite title contender or favorite. Honestly. Yeah, honestly, I mean, 
we we know you're a Warriors fan. We 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 well for the family out there that doesn't know, my guy Grant is a Warriors fan, so he definitely you know was pushing for his Warriors to win. Loon loon, that's what I like to see. Yes, and then I am I am of course if you're watching on YouTube, you see my background. I'm clearly a Lakers fan, so of course we pushing for our teams to win. But realistically, I just don't think that I just I don't think it's the Lakers year or the Warriors year. I'm gonna be I'm gonna yeah. just be honest. Especially I don't think the Lakers or the Warriors will be able to beat. Um, the Nuggets, nor the Celtics, to be honest, nor the Bucks, to be real with you. Yeah. But that's oh, yeah. so, so, so like, while I, while, while I, I want my, my Laker fans out there to know, like, I believe, but I ain't delusional. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I believe I ain't delusional. So while I do think the Lakers are going to have a good season, I don't think that, um, I don't think anyone's messing with the Nuggets right now. The Nuggets are just on yeah. another, especially out the West, Nuggets are on a whole nother level. But I do think that the Celtics, can and 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 I, I I'm not gonna say they are me- they are messing with the Nuggets because we haven't seen this new Celtics going up going up against this Nuggets squad so I can't just you know I can't just look at the at the paper and say oh the Celtics can mess with the Nuggets I'm saying on mm-hmm. paper the Celtics should be better than the Nuggets on paper they should be able to match up everything that everything that the Nuggets can do and then do a little bit more so I'm gonna have to agree with you, and I'm gonna tell you my championship favorites are also the Celtics this year. I just think that, nice. like, bro, like you, you, you have two, and I've been saying this for a couple of years now, and I, I've, I've caught some hate, but I, that, I, that's fine. I'm, I'm cool with it. Two number one options. Jalen Brown is the number one option. You put him on any, in my opinion, you put him on any other team in the NBA, he's the number one option. So you have two. Ah, you're not feeling that, Grant? Not, not, not any team. That? Not any team. Not any what, team. Tell me what team he's not a number one option. <laughs> the Bucks, the Warriors, the. Okay. All right. The all right. Lakers, okay. okay. I, guess, I guess you're right. I guess. Okay. Nuggets. <laughs> whoa. Whoa. Uh, I mean, I, I would take Jaylen Jalen Brown. Brown. Right? Yeah, I would take Jalen Brown over Jamal Murray, but I mean, I guess he wouldn't be number one. Jokic is still number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was like, did you say? Okay, second? okay. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take that take back. Not any team in the NBA, but the majority of teams, except contending teams. I think Jalen Brown could come on to that team and be the number one guy, be the one A guy. So I mean, for the Celtics, bro, they have two one A guys, like how you said, they have Kristaps, they have the perimeter defense in. Um, in Drew Holiday, they have great bench scoring in in uh, and Derek White. Like they have a real freaking squad, and they can really match up with anybody in the league. So I'm, I'm right there with you for the Celtics. Yeah, but all right. I, I think I might have might have picked them last year. I can't remember exactly, but I I just they're they're so good, man. I if one of these years they're gonna get it, and I think this is their best opportunity this year. Yeah. But before we get to our last segment here, I gotta ask Grant: Is that an Andres Beatrice jersey in the back? No, 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 no. That's hilarious. You you knew the number, I guess. Over there, um, you knew the number. That's hilarious. I was like, that's like the only one of the only Warriors who's like been number twelve. I feel like. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I was just like, it looked like it. <laughs> yeah, it's actually a, a custom jersey that I got when I was a kid. It just says my last name, Pisani, on the back. Okay, I didn't know you for the Warriors, Grant. Okay, I see you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I was about six, yeah, they they got me a ten day. <laughs> yeah, got you a ten day for, for a little bit. <laughs> All, right, man. All right, so then let's get to this last segment that we got here, y'all, and that is the winners and losers of the week. Um, very simple. We're just going to talk about a team, player, coach, entity, something around the NBA that is a winner to you, and something around the NBA that is a loser. Uh, Grant, since you are the guest, I will give you the floor. I want you to go ahead and go first. Who's your winner and loser of the week? Um, I think my loser of the week is got to be the Grizzlies. I, you know, it's they, they, the whole league is watching them because you know Jaws out for for twenty five games, and in uh, we're trying to see like how can they fare throughout that twenty five games. You know, when Jaw was injured last year, they were very good without him, but you know they started off. 0 oh, and two, and I'm just not so sure about the Grizzlies right now. I I, I think it's going to be tough to come back. I mean, we'll see how it plays out. I mean, they got the addition of Marcus Smart; that'll definitely help when Jaws out. But I'm not so sure the West is going to be tough, and you know they got to play a lot of games in that West. And you know, starting off 0 and two is not the best right now. So you know, we'll we'll see. We'll see how as it plays out. But they're definitely like a loser of the first week for me. Um, as far as winners, I mean, the Orlando Magic, man, they just look so good. They just look so good. I, 
I love watching them. Paulo, Franz, Markel, like they're 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 a fun team to watch. And you know, I I love Wendell holding down the middle. I've always loved Wendell and a two and zero start. They've they've got they've been playing well. I think I think they're gonna definitely surpass expectations for them this year. So yeah, I got them my winners in the first week. Okay, I like that. I like the you got the Magic as winners, and then uh, you got the Grizzlies as losers. I like that. I like that. So for me, my loser of the week is James Harden. James the man's, Harden. The man is a yeah. The man's a freaking like. I'm tired of it. I'm tired. We we. I'm not even gonna touch on it too much. We already talked about it earlier. I'm tired of it. Show up to freaking work. That's yeah. it. Show up to work. That I don't care if you. I don't care what's going on. Show up to work, man. Winner of the week is got to be Luca, bro. Luca freaking Doncic, game one against the Spurs, thirty three points, thirteen rebounds, ten assists, and does not let Wemby get his first win. Second game for the for the uh, the Mavericks against the Nets. Luca, forty nine points, ten rebounds, seven assists. Should have had fifty points, but he missed the free throw. Bro, like. Come on, Luca, chill out, dog. Like we talking yeah. about the first two games of the of the season, puts up a triple double, then a double double, and he gets the win. Shout out, Luca, man, real yeah. winner of the week for me. <laughs> it's so clutch. I was watching that, uh, you know, just Wemby's first game, and I wanted to to watch obviously Luca and Kyrie go at it, but the Spurs were in that game the whole game, and they had to get. I think it was like down the down clutch in that game. It was like Kyrie scored. A three and then a bucket and then like Luca mm-hmm. just iced it with a three. I think it's just like they're just gonna be so lethal down the clutch and yeah, Luca has just been absolutely insane this year. So Man. yeah, he he. I mean, he definitely like you know. I think he could he could be a little MVP contender this year too. Hell yeah, he could. Hell yeah, he could. Hopefully, my guy Luca. I, the only thing, I, I, like the game wise and stats wise, he'll be there. Like I, I have yeah. no question about that. But I think the only thing for me is like, will he win enough games to get? Yeah. I think the last time we gave somebody like an MVP that like didn't win enough games was like Westbrook. But that's because he did that ridiculous tri- triple double. Like yeah. that was crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so yeah, so that 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 was understandable. But yeah, that's the only concern. I don't know if Luca will win enough games, but. Mm-hmm. We shall see, man. We shall see. But for the family out there, man, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, me and my guy, Grant, we was just spilling for all, like almost about like an hour, a little less than an hour, spilling about the NBA, man, talking, recapping some of the things that happened game uh, week one, um, talking about, you know, we did the up or down report, who is winners and losers of the week. Uh, but before we get out of here, Grant, do you have any last things that you want to add or anything that you want to um, shout out before we skedaddle? Um. You know, I just, as a Warriors fan, I'm so happy that CP3 is on our, we got the point guard on our squad. He's a legend. There's so many Warriors fans that hate him because of his time in Houston and our playoff battles with him and all the flops and whatnot. But yeah, he's, I, I just enjoy basketball. I enjoy greatness. And he's been so good for so long. I used to have a, uh, what's it called? A, a Hornets uh, jersey of his back in the day. But um, I, I just, I've always loved CP other than, when we have the battles against him, but I've loved him and I'm just happy for him to come to the Warriors. I think it's going to be a great fit. Not, I don't, I don't think we're going to contend for a title this year, but I think it's going to be great. And I think it's going to be um, just amazing to watch. Like there, there's so much excitement in the NBA this year. It's going to be such a fun year. You know, you got all these rookies and I, I just, there's so many rookies that I'm watching this year, like all the way down to like the second rounders that like, I'm just like, some of these guys could, could, make an impact and like help out a team and actually look pretty good. Um, and then you got so many superstars and you got a couple super teams. Like it's just going to be really exciting year. So I'm really excited and hope, hope you're excited and all the viewers are excited for this. Cause it's going to be, you got to buckle up. It's going to be a lot going on and you know, hopefully, Hopefully that James Harden situation just gets figured out and we can just move on from that. <laughs> Man, let's just move on, move on and on. just freaking figure out our lives. Come on, James. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Man, I'm right there with you, brother. And um, I, I know I speak for me and uh, for all the family out there listening. We appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you, you know, sharing your knowledge, sharing it giving us some, some time in your day. I know you're a busy man, but um, just wanted to say thank you. And um, like how I said at the beginning, for the family out there, if you guys want to stay up to date with everything that Grant's got going on, I'm going to link uh, his social medias in the description down below. And I'll also have it right there, right under his little square. 
Um, but for me, man, like our grand said, NBA season is freaking back. Um, y'all know what we're doing, man. I'm gonna keep dropping these um, weekly recap episodes. Where we'll be recapping the week. Uh, we'll also be dropping an episode during the week. We'll be something about the NBA, like a little smaller episode. Um, but I hope y'all stay tuned, man. Like how Grant said, buckle in. This is gonna be a big season, not only for Clutch Talk and for the family over here, but just for the for the NBA community, man. So, um, hope that y'all ready for it as much as me and Grant ready for it. Um, Happy NBA season. Happy hoop season. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And um, for now, we out of here, y'all. Deuces.